be. I'm done running. My sacred mission is to create the perfect society. I'm gonna tell you something. We were gone for quite a while, but no matter what happens next, the galaxy still needs its guardians. Are you ready? For one last ride? Don't forget where we came from. He didn't want to make things perfect. Da, 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 da. You sound insane. You realize that? Oh, yeah. The whole world got crazy. Are you serious? Ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime. Hey, what's up? We got more MCU talk here on MAM. Welcome back. I'm Kent to lead us through this one. Guardians, Volume 3, the end of the Guardians series, we think. The end of the know. James Gunn Guardians series. Yeah. We know. We'll talk about all that on this episode of Mad About Movies. Welcome in. I'm joined by Brian and Richard. Fellas, how we doing? We're only a few days away now from Fast X. Mm. It's family time. I saw Vin showed up at the F1 race and did this long intro for the F1 race where it's like, F1's all about family. Literally said that. He said he lives his life a r- one race at a time, though. <laughs> so there might be some controversy over <laughs> yeah, I was a quarter say, mile yeah. at a time. Might have to get some clarity from Vin on that. Well, that, if you say that, you can get real proud boys pretty quick. Mm-hmm, yeah. Right? If you don't yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that can get carefully. misconstrued really bad. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. But there was a, a picture that was snapped of, I believe it was Tom Cruise and Vin together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can we make that yeah. happen? Cross the streams, baby. Yeah. We we'll shoot them both I mean, of them to space at the same time. <laughs> yeah. That would be great if Tom. Tom needs to be a fast. villain in Fast. I think that would be like oh, here, awesome. That or he's just, we don't explain it. But Another he's just brother O'Con- of Dom. He, yeah. No, he's just O'Connor now. O'Connor's yeah, okay. back. I think we would have to explain that. <laughs> <laughs> they just treat him exactly like Paul Walker, but it's just Tom Cruise. Like, all right, cool. <laughs> I like it. It's a good idea. Maybe O'Connor's brother. <laughs> yeah, or he's just like, yeah, I had to disappear for a while. I got some work done. But o- O'Connor's still yeah. still alive. Yeah. And See you. That's what yeah. I'm saying. He got some work done, yeah. and they play See You Again, and it's just Tom Cruise, yeah. and he parachutes in. I'm in. He had to get some work done uh, to avoid... Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, like he's exactly. in he's in Witsec, so he uh, yeah exactly had to get a little work done. Yeah, I like. And he this. decided he wanted to look like the guy from Cocktail. <laughs> Growing up, they just they just don't talk about anything Tom uh-huh. Cruise did post like 1993. <laughs> he's like, you look good. He's like, yeah, <laughs> I like this. I'm gonna go, this I'm gonna is, go drive this, this works. Yeah, this Porsche off, um, Old Trafford. He's like, <laughs> okay. Looks like we've got a another we'll 10 that. days or so of, of dominance from Guardians at the box office before Fast X comes out here at the end of May. Mm. Guardians won the weekend. Last weekend, Mario Brothers still some kind of an audience out there for it. That's the, the family audience out there. Pratt's trying to see if he can get Jurassic oh, Park yeah, out it, before. Yeah, it is. Can <laughs> they get one out? Can we get a mouse rat uh, movie out? <laughs> ASAP. I fell into the pit, the movie. <laughs> bye, bye, little. <laughs> I love Mouse Rat, one of the greatest fictional rock bands yeah, I know. ever. It's, it's really just funny. under the wonders, but. Uh, it's such a good otherwise. joke that that bit of that kind of loser, stoner, you know, slacker guy. Um, you could do a lot of funny bits that are less funny of bands he'd want to be like, you know, he could want to be a metal guy or like uh-huh. a bad rap or whatever. The fact that he just loves Dave Matthews band yeah. <laughs> is such a funny, <laughs> like specific to that exact yeah. age that he is kind of mm-hmm. guy. Like we all know that guy. Yeah. yeah it's, it's a, I love it. I love it. I just finished a Parks rewatch and it's been a while. I don't know that me. it's ever going to get old, man. It's still know, so it's funny. It's I such think, a great last season, too. Yeah. It's like the opposite of a lot of shows. Right. It ends so well, I think. Those Some last three are. seasons like feel more 
relevant and prescient in some ways yeah. than they did at the time. Like, that one feels sure. the most Bonnie likely. was ahead of the rest of America. Yeah. Uh-huh. That one feels the most likely to do another season of, of, of a lot of these, of the 30 Rocks, The Office. Mm. Yeah, uh, could, community, sure. all those. I think yeah. community's trying yeah. to do a movie, but it's gotten sidelined by the writer strike again, so that's right. cursed. But right. and you never know, Dan Hartman could creep someone out again at any moment. Yeah, at any point, way. Amy Poehler wrong, popped yeah. up as Leslie Nope on SNL recently. Yeah. We had April Ludgate. You know, I think Offerman I think would Poehler's be down. The easy one to get, surprisingly, now. Yeah, like it's kind of the opposite of maybe The Office or something. Like right, right? like you could right. probably get Poehler. Yeah. Oh, for but sure. Aubrey yeah. Plaza and. Even Adam, Pratt, uh, even Adam Scott is right. tough. Oh, you know? yeah. Right. Yeah. There you He's go. doing the party yeah. down thing. Though, again, so I, I think he'd probably come back for it. But he probably, yeah, I'm Rob with Lowe's you. Rob Lowe's working. Right. He's trying to, you know, he's get, getting right. Rui and all those guys together. So <laughs> he's busy, you know. He's done a heck of a job he's structuring <laughs> the Lakers this year <laughs> yes. on the fly, you know. On the fly. I'd Adam kill Scott's for, I mean, got I'd a. kill uh, for Rob Lowe over Mark Cuban. Got a PGA tour to. That's to true. That's true. Competing yeah. in too, so in that stupid cool. Potter, very busy. Gosh. He'll make Adam's way more money got the golf. golfer. Weird golf t- tangent. I'm going to go on. We never do this on the show, so I'll keep it t- ten seconds. But such a cool looking dude, and he has the dumbest putter. He's one of those guys that puts like up to his chest. One of those weird. Is there anything mm-hmm. less cool than that in sports? You hit a great uh, iron maybe shot. just playing. I golf. like the long putter. Yeah. But I, I like the long know. putter. I'm it's a fan. A cool look. I thought it you was a cool great way shot. to undermine the rules without breaking them. You're Australian. And then you bring out this weird crutch looking thing that goes up to like your Adam's Love apple it. and putt. Like you look like such a dork. Love the Lauren Roberts uh, putter. I mean, it's cool if you're like a fat guy, but like you're Adam Scott, like you should, you should just putt. That's true. Like if it's, Tiger it's, pulled that thing out. Yeah. It's only like, badass if you are good at it. If you pull yeah. that thing out and you're just missing everything still, yeah, yeah, that's bad. It only is awesome if you're making every, every putt. That is one of the funnier bits Adam Scott does is every time Adam Scott wins a PGA tour tournament he just takes credit for it on twitter yeah he's like god just want to thank my fans just retweeting everybody that's tagging him not knowing it's the actor that's awesome uh all right that rem podcast he had for a while that's a deep cut that is like an rem rem are you rem remy was it yeah was what it was called well scott ackerman i believe was on that one believe it or not as many things as chris pratt has done i think parks and rec still my favorite role of his, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, this Star Lord role though, it's up there. Um, might be, his, yeah, might be up there. I mean, I know th- there's an audience for the Jurassic stuff, but is there this got Ga- this Guardians uh, series has resonated for sure with audiences. This most recent one hundred eighteen million dollars opening weekend, less than Guardians Volume Two, mm. but more than Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, almost $30 million more than Guardians of the Galaxy, but cost $80 million more than Guardians of the Galaxy did. So wow. uh, they got a lot more ground to make up in terms of the investment that they've made in this one, but I think they'll be fine at the end of the day. They've already made $300 million worldwide, so they've broken into the green. And uh, I don't know if that's a disappointment, Brian. Where do you fall on Guardians 3 making less opening weekend than Guardians too. Yeah, it's got to be. It's got to be a bit of a disappointment. Um, I was a little surprised, honestly. I I don't ever have trouble uh, getting tickets to to a movie. You know, like I, the the pre sale thing, I've never done except for except for like Force Awakens. Because um, we, I mean, we live in DFW. There's fifty theaters, you know, within within ten or fifteen miles of me, and so usually it's not a big deal. Um, so I, I actually, I mean, we had trouble getting tickets, uh, and ended up at kind of a dinky theater that I wasn't super impressed with, but so I kind of assumed that, I mean, that's a little bit anecdotal, but, but when you see all the buzz around it and it was getting, it was getting good ratings and whatnot. And then, then you start having trouble getting tickets. I thought, I thought this was going to be something closer to like 150 million opening weekend and, uh, so yeah, I imagine Disney's kind of disappointed with with 118 and what's it worldwide? I'm pulling it up now. Like yeah, 318, it's three, oh, 318 or something yeah. like that. Yeah, I mean that's not bad at all, but I definitely think it is indicative of uh, like if if you're Iger on Monday, you're saying, all right, guys, like this kind of proves the point of less might be more on this. Like we've probably reached the, a saturation point where we're maybe we need to 
we need to rein back how many movies we're doing and all this sort of stuff. Uh, cause it's taking like two years off. Yeah. I would that's say, the thing I would yeah. do. like let everything that's in production, sure. keep making it. And then like everything that's not is on an 18 month mm-hmm. delay. Well, yeah. to, <laughs> to counter that this, this is the first guardians movie since 2017. So it's been a long yeah. time since they've done guardians and they probably feel like, mm-hmm. like we just need to get this out. Like we can't that's keep, fair. especially with James Gunn out the door. At this point, yeah, he's no, probably I don't like mean to shelve this one. I'm just saying, whatever they're working on that's supposed to come out in like 2026, go ahead and mm-hmm. just make that. Yeah, maybe maybe the writer's strike could be a blessing. You know, yeah, like, I, that's a. Great I was point, talking yeah. to somebody when I was out of town last week. We were all talking about Marvel movies and do you watch them and all that. And uh, somebody brought up the point like Marvel needs to just go dark for like five years straight and not release anything. I was yeah. like, that's actually could- genius. They'd create and just create right such away. a huge demand for for nostalgia yeah. for the original stuff and like wanting new stuff. So I think that might actually be the smartest thing to do. Like, if, and if they're playing this for like the twenty year game instead of like the five to eight year game, maybe that's the strategy. Yeah, I mean, but I think that you know they're revenue generating. Star Wars they're is all doing profitable. It. Yeah, they're all, yeah. Star Wars took a little break, but these are such revenue drivers for them it pays for everything else you know you even think about something like ant-man and listomania or whatever it was it was um not successful right in terms of marvel thing but it still made sure whatever 150 million dollars in profit and so like shareholders don't really care as much about fatigue maybe that it's continually profitable yeah no, um, that's definitely true but that but you but to their point they probably would care if it's like hurting future profitability i don't know mm-hmm. there's there's definitely a, a tightrope there to walk um but it's it's they're in a weird they're in a weird spot right now it's it's not like the quality of these have been especially this one is not bad by any means it just this was higher I quality really, than yeah uh, tv shows really hurt them i i, I really think so do. too they probably need to take a take a hard look at that but I think the most concerning thing, if you're Marvel, Disney, looking back at this, is the fact that Doctor Strange made way more than this. Almost 70 yeah. million more than this opening weekend. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought that uh, Guardians was a more well-liked property. I thought more people would be excited yeah, for this. I thought it had more pop culture relevance. All that kind of stuff. More relevance in the MCU. All the kind of stuff you would want for this did, did dr strange break people did everyone just go to that movie and it's like <laughs> i I'm, i don't know what this is i'm i can't i can't anymore and the, the last few movies seem to have suffered similar fates uh, they all haven't been as successful as we had anticipated uh, that would be the most discouraging for me is that we had a character that we thought was just like in kind of a throwaway we have to do this kind of movie make way more mm. than something you think has true potential to be a good movie that, and, you know, have legs, all the kind of stuff. But I think yeah. that, yeah. And then people, Brian, sorry, I'm not trying to cut no, you off. You, you, you cook. This is yeah. your world more than mine. But like, mm-hmm. um, the, I do think, I mean, we, we touched on it, but like people are like, maybe not necessarily watching the shows as much. I mean, they're probably watching them in good numbers compared to most streaming shows. I'm not saying mm-hmm. that, but like, they're aware of them. And I think people just assume they're behind now. Like, oh man, you know what? Yeah. I think there's a big part. I'm, I would go see Guardians, but like I didn't see Loki. And that was, I watched the first two. And then I, you know, my kid had soccer. And so I'm not, you know, I'm pro- I'll catch up later. Like it's like kicking it, kicking the can. And the next thing you know, the assumption is these people have 40 hours of stuff to <laughs> catch up on. And mm-hmm. they're just like, you know what? That's, I'll just watch The Good Doctor. And and move on with my life. And uh, I think that's been really damaging to them in ways that certainly, by the way, I, I don't even mean to dunk on Disney for it. Or Marvel, I, I could probably didn't predict that. Like I thought, sure. I mean, I, I whined about it mm-hmm. um, that, you know, there'd be, okay, they used to ask for nine hours of my life a year. And now they're asking for 60. I made that joke a million times. But like, I didn't know, I didn't think it would be like necessarily hugely damaging to their box office returns, but it kind of, I think it's a huge culprit. Yeah. I think that's a big player. Um, and I think you're right. Yeah. I think you're onto something with 
the the feeling of oh crap I didn't watch this thing. We sat down to watch this. A couple of my friends came to watch with me and Coop, and uh, right as the movie started, my my buddy was there. Was like, oh crap! I never saw Thor: Love and Thunder. Is that going to be a deal right. here? Like, and I was like, and what's funny about that is like this guy, my my buddy Daniel is is Daniel's yeah, Daniel and I have I been Daniel. friends. Big yeah, we've been friends since he yeah. was since we were like six years old, um, and he for the first like ten plus years of this Marvel thing, um, he would be the guy that like we'd go together, all of us, you know, big group of friends, and whatever the weird uh, like post credit scene was that's like teasing something that you don't understand what's gonna be, the whole row would then look at him and be like, all right, what does that mean? Because right. he's super comic book guy, and for him to not only to have skipped Thor 11th, and I mean, look, it's not like he was like, ah, screw that, I'm not watching it. It's, I'm an adult and I work all the time, you know, that kind of thing. He w- For him to not only have not seen it, but not even realize, oh, right, I forgot that's a part of this until the moment that the movie starts, I think was, for me, that was kind of a little bit glass shattering, like, oh, crap, like, this is legitimately, again, that's anecdotal, but that, if that is something that's transpiring to people, then goodness, this is this could be a really really rough thing. Um, people didn't like Thor. People that did see Thor and Love and Thunder didn't like it. I am still fine with it. Ant Man kind of the same way, but like, I think the biggest shot. I think I, maybe you, you already said this, Kent. So I'll just very quickly be like, I think the three biggest parts of this whole thing at this point are Spider Man, Black Panther, and Guardians, and. That would be my guess. And for, for Doctor Strange to outperform that, this movie so significantly, um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I was pretty, I was pretty surprised by that. It, it, it was not what I would have guessed coming into this thing. I thought this one, this one almost stands alone more than the, the, the other branches of, of this, uh, universe, I think, in a lot of ways. I mean, it ties in, tied in really well to Avengers, tied in, you know, kind of in a fun way at the beginning of Thor. Uh, and all that, but otherwise, you absolutely could. With if you only saw Avengers: Infinity War and Endgame, and then these movies, you would have no problem. I think sticking with unless I'm one hundred percent. I thing. I went so in. I thought that they would be kind of immune to that, but it isn't. Yeah. It obviously isn't. So. I thought. It, I mean, the way they put out there that yeah, this is pretty much the last time you're going to see these characters yeah. together, uh-huh. and that was. The uh, point the entire time, I'm surprised there wasn't more support mm-hmm. going out and like, uh, I, I want to see the Guardians one last time, considering this is wrapping up a trilogy, it does feel like an end to, uh, you know, a, a place in pop culture history for us for the last uh, decade or so. And it really puts in perspective for me just how big Spider-Man is. Spider-Man in two years ago. No Way Home made twice as much as this opening weekend, mm. literally double, and made $1.9 billion at the end of the day. If this one gets to one, I think everyone would be very happy with that. But it puts in perspective, let's ride the Spider-Man train. Don't know if we have much left uh, with Black Panther. It almost cracked $900 million, made a little bit less than Doctor Strange. <sighs> Yeah, they, they, they got a lot of thinking to do, and we'll talk mm-hmm. more about that at the end of the episode. But let's get into this movie. Man, I, I love this series, fellas. I remember yeah. one of my first memories of the podcast starting, we kind of looked forward to what's coming out for Marvel. And mm-hmm. I remember this being in development and saying to you guys, yeah, it's, it's a raccoon and, and mm-hmm. a talking tree, but trust me, if they do it right, this could be really fun. And I feel like I've uh, lived up to that uh, I don't know, prediction. Sure. I feel like yeah. they've gotten the most out of these characters. I feel like they've done it justice from what I expected it to be and uh, gotten the chemistry out of the uh, the team that I thought they could get. It certainly is some of the best writing in the MCU, some of the best direction in the MCU from J- James Gunn. There's a clear, distinct voice to that. So that makes it appealing. But what I liked the most about this was the fact that it was basically detached from the MCU. A few references here and there. But I think mm-hmm. the, the movie boiled down to, to two words for me. Save Rocket. Like, that mm-hmm. was the plot of the movie. 
And <laughs> it didn't really get much more complicated than that. I appreciated that. And I was in for the ride once that became clear that that's what we were doing. So um, that's my general general thoughts. Of course, we'll get into more here, but want to toss it over to Brian for his general thoughts. Yeah, man. I, I to be honest, I loved this. Uh, I'm going to grade this very, very highly. And uh, this is my favorite. This is my favorite branch of this universe. I think nice. it's, they're so fun. All of the characters I think are fun. All of them. Um, they get, they get more mileage out of like the 10th person, you know, in the crew than uh, whatever Captain America movie does out of the, th- third build actor i mean it, it's it's um it's a really impressive collection of of talent and then you know i don't like anything that gun it not i'm not like super anti anything but there's nothing that he's done outside of this that i really love but he, he really is kind of the perfect guy to be writing and directing these movies and uh and they're distilled so well i think through you know, as much as crap as we want to give the Disney machine at times, I think I think oh, there's sure. some positives to having to go through well, Feige and stuff. Um, especially with someone like Gunn. It's like the, actually a weirdly, mm-hmm. ironically, now they're adversarial. Sure. Um, yeah. At least in terms of business. I don't think mm-hmm. there's any mm-hmm. bad blood or anything that I know. But like, it's like actually a perfect mix of like yeah. a filmmaker like Gunn who like, is talented but stupidly goes over the line on a lot of mm-hmm. stuff. Like mm-hmm. I don't, I'm not like offended by it. I just mean like it hurts the quality of his work sometimes For trying sure. to be so edgy. Yeah. In the Disney machine, and then the Disney machine, which plays it too safe, being pushed by uh, mm-hmm. James Gunn. It's like weirdly a perfect marriage, and now Agree. they're they're yeah. uh, fighting it yeah. out. Yeah, totally. But yeah, man, I I love this movie, and I love how um how this whole thing came together and you get the sense that there was like a, co- a cohesive plan from start to finish. And I don't know that that's a hundred percent true by any means, but it, it feels that way anyway. Uh, to stick the landing like this is, is really impressive. And I, yeah, I'm glad you said that kid. Cause like it, it feels like this trilogy and, and it's crossovers into the rest of the MCU is like, I think it's very important to the MCU as a whole, but also it feels like a a sort of important series in in the the history of this podcast and obviously that's more important than than the MCU but it, it does it feels yes. like one of these like kind of hallmark movies uh really series but uh that that we have uh looked at over this last we've decade. talked about it's, from it's development to casting yeah. to everything and now it's yeah. the trilogy's wrapping up it is kind of bittersweet that way yeah sure so I love this. Coop loved it. Um, it I was kind of a mess watching it at times, uh, and and but in a, in a good way. I love Rocket. Rocket is the best character in this whole this whole series, I think. And for this to be kind of his movie is yeah. awesome. And it, I loved it. I, I had a wonderful time with it. They actually got Bradley Cooper to show up and promote it at the yeah. premiere <laughs> yeah, and seriously. acknowledge he was in it. Yeah. <laughs> Vin, nowhere to be seen though. Too busy, man. Yeah, too busy. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Richard, general thoughts on Guardians in this? Love Guardians. Um, I remember when we first started this podcast, I remember being in my old townhouse in beautiful, scenic Bedford, Texas. Um, Seems like 10 lifetimes ago. And Kent being excited for this. I'm sure Brian was too. I just remember Mm. Kent being excited for this. And me being like, I don't, what? I don't, what is going on? They're like, like being very confused by it and not caring. Wasn't like, I knew James Gunn uh, a bit and didn't care. I, this always re- represents the great surprise to me of Mar- of the depth mm-hmm. of Marvel um, properties. Mm-hmm. Seeing this and kind of instantly being you know, it's a vibe from kind of minute one and going, Oh, okay. This is a thing. This is a unique corner of this universe at the time. The Avengers things was starting, but this felt separate and kind of punk rock and tangential and all this Mm. stuff. And, and I always think of this as, as one of those moments as someone who like, uh, I don't follow comics, but like follows the film industry quite a bit, follows entertainment journalism, follows actors 
and I, I kind of compulsively do it. I, I've separate, ironically, the last few years, even though I do this show, in my personal life, I don't, I'm not as obsessive as I once was, but like, um, you know, I'm someone that, you know, when I was 14, I used to just go on IMDb for six hours mm. straight, just like mm -hmm. click through stuff, you know? I have that weird brain, which is fine, whatever. It serves a purpose, but like, I'm, I'm very, really surprised by stuff is like the sure. negative side effect of that. And so, you know, this was one of those where everyone's like, oh, this is a whole new thing. I was really excited by it. So this always represents that to me. The sequel, you kind of know what you're in for. It's during that whole era. Where is this going to, then you're more interested. How is this going to now connect to everything else we know about Marvel? And now, and now this one is, how is this going to represent whatever or be separate again from whatever is next? So anyway, it, it, it's something that is a, a, a actually a property I have a, a lot of I'm the least of the comic book guy of the three of us but it's actually a property I have a large affinity for tonally and just what it represents in terms of the surprise factor sorry I've been talking yeah. for 20 minutes about oh, that but love it. Yeah, good. Um, but from what I remember <laughs> about the, the about two about Guardians 2 it, it's a good movie I thought this one was better it, but that one it has kind of a weird amount of finality to it when it ends, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously you have the Avengers Infinity War and stuff like that that kind of is a epilogue to it in a weird way. But like, it was, I had no idea where this would really even go um, other than the stuff from the, the Thor movie. So it was, I, it was kind of fun to go in again. Like I kind of knew, I don't know the plot of Quantumania, but I kind of knew where it was, what it was going to be and stuff. This one I was, curious again and, mm -hmm. and it's certainly up to that it's a bummer that it didn't appeal to to uh more of that it, it's so interesting i don't know other you know it might be now the next phase of marvel is just like you just go all in on spider-man and everything else you you kind of hope supports that i don't know what they do but this i thought li totally lived up to what i expect from a guardians 3 and surpassed in a lot of ways and mm -hmm. Sean Gunn and Bradley Cooper, that kind of combined performance was, I try to give Sean Gunn credit because um, I think he does a lot of the, phys obviously all the physicality and I think that's a big part of that character and, and Bradley Cooper's great as the voice and that character is incredible. One of my favorite, maybe my favorite Marvel character and it's it was such a great fun. I so didn't want to go see this too because I'd been on the road all weekend and I'd work stuff and I went last night and and uh, so didn't want to be there. <laughs> you know, those kind of mm -hmm. moments where you're mm -hmm. like, that's the yeah. last thing in the world I want to do. And then was, you know, completely happy to be there the entire run. So I really loved this. I thought it was great. Mm -hmm. um, and I can be kind of grumpy about Marvel. So you know that means a lot, hopefully, coming from me. But I, I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, I think this is the crowning achievement or the example that Marvel can show other directors, young directors, and say, this is the perfect example of a director coming in with an idea, pitching it to us, and executing that idea to, you know, finality or, or whatever, and it being a success and mattering in the grand scheme of things, right? Because he came in, you know, this Guardians of the Galaxy series, they're like, no. <laughs> He's like, well, mm. here's how it can work, you know, and here's the, how Thanos works in, and here's how Thanos works in with with Tony Stark, and I think the way they played the weight of Gamora in yeah. the Avengers throughout, and the way that ended was a stroke of genius. Kept those characters important. Obviously, mm -hmm. you have the uh, comic relief of the other characters, but. I think there's not a, a character in this that doesn't mean something to the group. There, yeah. There's no wasted energy here. I feel like there's mm -hmm. no character. Yeah. I feel like that. Why is he? Why is he hanging around? And I, I think that it, it, reminiscent of Star Wars to me. Honestly, I think yeah. the, the Guardians crew felt a lot like the Star Wars crew to me at the at the start. For sure, with the dynamic with Chewbacca, and you've got the droids, and you've got Leia, and you've got. Mm -hmm. uh, Star Lord, aka maybe Han, right in this case. So, yeah, it's um probably why I was attached to it from the start. Yeah. But yeah, this is such a great example of pitch, development, vision, execution. 
and then yeah. money at the end of the day, right? This was yeah. all, I feel like, Gunn's sure. uh, vision from the start. And 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 credit to Gunn that he worked with. I'm sure there were compromises, right, along the way. But sure. really, it felt like this one with Volume 3, with the way you know he was fired, brought back. We don't have to rehash all that. Mm-hmm. But it felt like he told them, hey, if you want more and more Guardians from me, this is what it's going to be. Okay, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and I don't give a crap about your Avengers Secret Wars movie in 2026 right. that you have to set up. Sure. I'm going to do right. my right. third Guardians movie yeah, and you're you right. can either totally. take it or leave it. Yeah. And that, they took it and I thought it was awesome and it felt mm-hmm. like his vision. It did not feel corporate at all. It was doubled down on the emotion in, in a lot of areas. It was dark. It was funny. It was visually entertaining it had some really deep cut needle drops right that you mm. would expect uh from this uh, i felt like an appropriate send-off for a lot of characters it's set up i think characters to maybe go some other places in the mcu if they want to go that direction but i mm-hmm. thought just the idea that let's make this rockets movie was i mean the the ultimate stroke i mean he's maybe the most popular character in this I think one of the most iconic characters in the last, I don't know, decade of, of blockbuster movies. I mean, I feel like he's he's on that Chewbacca level, honestly, now. It, it feels it's such a great achievement. And, I mean, we care about a freaking raccoon, you know? <laughs> it's yeah, a, I know. It's a cursing, I love all raccoons, It's though. a cursing raccoon <laughs> that, that we're all, like, crying yeah. about. And I think that's just an amazing uh, a- achievement, yeah. To make a garbage panda, well, uh, this yeah. uh, adorable, incredible character is 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 amazing, and for sure. I mean, I I know where I wanted this to go. I wanted them to do a Rocket and Groot movie. Maybe they do that eventually, but I am really glad we got to see the Rocket backstory because I was hoping mm-hmm. to get into that eventually in some 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 way. I'm glad they did it in this one. Yeah, because that seeing that executed was everything I thought it could be with the emotional punch. Yeah. And I, I think real, real fast aside here, cause I don't want this to, I think we've gotten past the point where the MCU and DC thing has to be debated and redebated and brought up over and over and over again. I kind of think the guardians are, are a little bit of a microcosm of, or just like, a, just like this, this stands as a great example of, how all of these when you just like were in in i don't know 2000 or 1995 or something if you're just doing a draft of all the superhero characters in comic books and you know going from like all right who who's got the 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 highest visibility rating or q rating or whatever yeah spider-man would be in there for sure up at the top and x-men probably those are the ones that Marvel didn't have at their disposal, you know, at the beginning of all this. And for them, Richard has said this several times over. And so uh, I'm sort of rehashing what you've said, but I, I think this movie kind of brought it home full. It's, it's yeah. You, if you're not a comic book reader, yeah, you probably knew who Thor, you probably knew who Thor was, but you may not have any, I didn't. And I think I'm pretty basic on this. I had no familiarity with it beyond God, God of Thunder, Hammer. Okay, cool. Uh, Captain America got Shield. Awesome. All right, you know maybe you know who Iron Man is, but there's so many characters within this universe that just had no real like mainstream cultural relevancy, and Guardians is so high on that list of like I don't even know nothing about this, and to get us to like you said can't get to a place where we care so much about a talking raccoon um, that we did not know anything about uh, nine years ago. I it And an really animated is, tree that says three words. Yeah. I mean, it's a really impressive feat to be able to, I mean, you, like I said, you can say what you want about Marvel. And at this point, especially like, yeah, it feels like a lot of them are kind of written by chat GPT or whatever. And <laughs> uh, you know, what work do most of the directors actually do and, and all these sorts of things. Okay. I get it. It's fine. But like, it's really impressive that they took all of these characters that 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 mainstream American audiences knew nothing about and created yeah, all of this absolutely. and made it so successful. 
And blended um, it all together. Yeah. 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 It's it's an impressive feat. That I don't know. That hit me as I was watching this movie of like, gosh, I freaking love this raccoon so much. And yeah. I had no idea. It's not like Batman or the X Men or Spider Man, like the characters that I grew up loving and like being, you know, sort of a mainstream thing, all of those characters were this guy was these characters were not, and there's a lot of them in this universe that fell into that camp and they've made me care about them over the years. And that's, that's, you know, that's impressive. 100%. I, I think this is one of the best uh, Marvel series. I mean, I love X-Men too, which we're talking about in the VIP this mm-hmm. week, throwback to X2 20th anniversary of that bad boy. So uh, get excited so, VIPs for that mad about movies, podcast.com slash VIP for that conversation. I still think there's potential for X-Men to be something special if they do it correctly oh, in MCU. Sure. Um, oh, yeah. My gosh, obviously, yeah. obviously I haven't yeah. gone there, but I think that really, and I, I, we, we need to go to the, we need to stay with the movie. I know. I do think that is probably the next that, yes. I don't know that, that they're going to just take time for off. five years and yeah. then first movie yeah. back is new X-Men. Well, I, I oh, what gosh. I expect, I mean, you're, cause you're not going to get that. We know the next phase and all this sort of stuff, but X-Men I think is how they go, how they do go dark in a, like kind of a soft way mm-hmm. is we walk away from, all right, we do, uh, we do the whatever happens with Kang. We do this whole thing with with those Avengers well, movies, and then, yeah, who knows what that's going to look like? And uh, and then it's not going to look like yeah, here, <laughs> yeah, here, yeah. Hear me out on this. I I wanted to save this for the end, but since we're here, so this year the next one they have coming out is the Marvels, mm-hmm. and then next year they have Captain America, the new one with Anthony Mackie. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think Harrison Ford's in that too. Yeah, right. He's yeah. in Thunderbolts, I think. Thunderbolts. Well, Thunderbolts, Thunderbolts? is is twenty four yeah. as well. Okay. Yeah, he's in that. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then uh, Blade, which is which still is definitely getting pushed. Not in production. Point. Yeah. Yeah. They don't. They don't have anything on that yet. I think they just cast uh, the second lead uh, this week. Yeah. So we'll see where that comes when that comes out. And then Fantastic Four. At the beginning of 2025, but then do they really have to do Avengers King Dynasty, Avengers Secret Wars, and then four untitled Marvel movies? That's where I think X-Men starts to come in and you let X-Men be at least like 90% its own thing. Yeah. For this to start, to start with, you know, I mean, you can cross it over later, but then you work um, the, you work the blending it in as, as part of the nostalgia. Right. Well, after enough times, but. Right. Blade can Same be Fantastic kind of an origin Four, story if, kind if of thing. So that. can Fantastic Four. So can Thunderbolts. Yeah. yeah. Captain America can kind of play off the the TV show that it just had. Mm-hmm. I mean, if they if if Marvel came out this week and's like, you yeah, know what, guys, gonna, King um, Dynasty, Secret Wars, it's off. But trust us, it's going to be worth the wait. I would not be upset <laughs> if they just completely no, I agree. said, I just you think, know what, I think it ain't it Captain ain't. America as not Chris Evans. I know they had the show and all the things. I just feel like that one's the one that's just waiting to like real actually flop. Mm. I think. Yeah. Yeah, it could be. Could I be just think year of this. Year. Right. So. The random, you know, kind of twenty five percent Marvel fan that just goes sees those is gonna be so confused, like you know what I mean? They're right. they're totally sure. getting rid of the audience that hasn't seen one since event I don't know. I just feel like that's <laughs> the one where you're asking a little too much comic nuance from the audience for what they try to do. I'm going to try so hard to get Chris Evans involved in that somehow, some kind of cameo that they can tease in the trailer or something, some kind of hope that he's in it, right? That they can sell. I don't know. But yeah. Um, all right. I think Radiohead's Creep is a extremely overused needle drop <laughs> trailers, all that kind of stuff. But this acoustic version that they used was awesome. Yeah, it was cool. I think that was the cool. that was the touch it needed. Maybe the original version, I would have been like, "Oh, here we go again," you know. Yeah. But I think that you're right. It is overused, really but it's also such an incredible song. Great song. Yeah. I think you get it's away. like if it you can use it correctly, it's ever. great. Yeah. I didn't realize it charted for the first time ever on Spotify this week. Wow, it's crazy. I, I well, did not look at band the called Radiohead. I talked about this in a couple weeks ago, but I did not look at the awesome mix volume three track listing. Cause I felt like that would be a spoiler and I'm so glad same, I didn't same. look because there were yeah. so many moments in the movie that I was so happy. The, the space hog use. I loved that. 
was a was an awesome moment when Star Lord listening to Space Hog as they're kind of flying down in their colorful mm-hmm. suits. Yeah, it was greatness. And then the Florence uh, note mm-hmm. at the end. Awesome. Uh, great yeah. song. Yeah. Great song. Per- used perfectly too. Like that's that's not a song that I would have said is one of my 500 favorite songs, you know, coming in. But the usage rules, like that is the definition of, of a needle drop, I think, of like doing that effectively. Because it that is a perfect song for that moment. And it has built so beautifully to that that, yeah, I, th- I thought that ruled. That was a great... The way- I would say the needle drops were, were a step below volume one, but well above volume two. And some of, some of my volume one love may be built on the like man that was so cool and kind of surprising like you mentioned richard and and by now you're you're expecting it you know gun said he had this narrowed down to 181 songs before making his final (laughs) choices for this i'm sure he puts probably so much thought into how this is going to set the tone really i mean this is so important in these that he can't get it wrong. He probably maybe felt a little bit let down. He probably got some comments on the last one, like not as good as the first one. He felt a lot of pressure with this one to, to make it great. I thought he did. Yeah. I thought he, he knocked it out of the park and I love the use of the Zune and that I'm sure the Zune nostalgia, the eBay sales for Zune are going nuts right now (laughs) because of, because of this movie. But I love the way he, you know, went full circle with that to start, rock it out singing creep and then have him end with that that florence yeah. song was such a nice emotional arc that that really worked i mean you guys know me i i love uh rocket raccoon the character i've said that but my favorite animal is an otter i love otters cutest otters are cool yeah and so it's like james gunn came into my brain said we're going to give Kent the emotional punch of a lifetime and cast Linda Cardellini as this, as this otter. That's his best friend. Right. And it was just, it tore me up, man. It was, uh, it was perfectly uh, done. That otter is a harlot. That's true. Yeah. Screw that otter. Honestly. Yeah, I hate the otter. Yeah. According to Topanga. Kind of glad that otter died to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Super. She knows what she died. did. Yeah. yeah. She knows what she did. She broke up Corey and Topanga. They got back together. It's okay. <laughs> well, still, Caused me a lot Still, of break. doesn't matter. Yeah. 1998, bro. It's unfortunate I have to get that this. one day they break. broke up. I do. Never yeah, forget. That's why I've never gone skiing since. <laughs> I, I loved the the all the, the animals in this. was yeah, was awesome. Like, let's double down on the cuteness. Love that. And then the alternate earth, whatever they call it. Counter earth. Counter earth. Yeah. Both creepy and funny. I don't know what. Yeah, what I was going to gonna say great usage here for we we kind of already mentioned, but I I think that the gun Feige partnership works really well, uh, and I thought that showed in the visuals too because that's like it is creepy. It's a creepy world, but it wasn't it wasn't overly creepy or like yeah. hard to look at so much. You know, right. like it wasn't. I wasn't cringing while watching it. It, it felt like something that you would have seen. Uh, that it, it felt like an appropriate level of of kind of common ground. Between it felt like an two Earth things. in an al- alternate dimension, right? Sure. Yeah. Had that yeah. bad familiarity, kind of creepy, creepy, familiarity, but uh, also different and creepy. Um, I thought yeah. that was a that was a great sequence. Was what was your favorite uh, sequence in the film, Brian? I thought this the the colored spacesuits thing was really funny and really and well done. The bit with the the speaker of yeah. Somebody mentioned this in the Discord, but I I still think it's really funny when Star Lord is kind of uh, fish out of water, like doesn't mm-hmm. understand things. Like they're all you know the whole like it's very intuitive that uh, that would be the colors, and he's just like what you know freaking out. But I thought that was really funny. That was that was Dug well that written. a lot. Yeah. yeah, that was great. Um. That was maybe the funniest, but like Drax ruled in this movie too. I I, Drax I was really happy. Dude. He does. I felt like in two, two it kind of lost way a little bit. Too slapsticky. Yeah, look, I will say though, I went it. back and watch rewatched one and two last week, getting ready for this, and I think I got to a place where I didn't think two was that good, and I I liked it more this time no, around than good. I had yeah. the last time. I, I enjoyed it quite a bit, but yeah, Drax was Drax was perfect in this movie. 
pairing him with Mantis is really funny. I, I dig their the vibe that the two of them have and the kind of lovable idiots bit that they have going back and forth. So so all those moments with Drax I thought were um kind of second just to to Rocket and and his character arc and growth and so uh yeah, all the all those were were really well done. And on the other side of the you know, not enjoyable but but very well done. Like the flashback sequences were Rocket with Rocket were the best. So so good. They yeah, were the you know, they were, they were hard to watch. They were awful at times. Like I had to kind of do a vibe check with Coop before we went to see this cuz you know, like I mean, and we'll say too, by the way, very it. kind. All of the uh I had so many people reach out like cuz we went to see this Saturday more Saturday afternoon. I had so many people reach out like Thursday and Friday who listen and know that Coop like really couldn't couldn't do multiverse of madness and like just hey just a heads up it's pretty dark like it was very kind of everybody to to reach out like that yeah that's yeah but but yes our... but i had to do kind of a vibe check with him of like hey man like because he's he loves animals so much he's so kind of soft-hearted on that stuff and we're i mean you know we're dealing with we're about to have to put our dog down like all these things are like kind of rough things and i was like you told you him that right before like, the movie started, right? Yeah, yeah. I just broke it to him right then and there. Like, all right, let's go see the movie. No, um, as the as lights were going down, you said, "Put the dog to sleep." Hey, by the way, and it's just like just so ah, you know, yeah, yeah, brutal, just brutal. But yeah, I had to kind of like check on him, like, all right, do you, you know, I if you want to bail out of this, we can. It's cool, you know. I don't want you to feel like you have to go see this just because, but I want you to get that there's going to be animals that are, you know, that some of the characters might die, and they're. Animals are going to be in peril and all that sort of stuff. Um, and, I, and you know, he handled it just fine. He was great. But, like, those were dark. Those are really yeah. dark scenes. And I thought it, but I thought they handled them so well to the point to, like, get everything across and, and really build that. This was my saving Private Ryan on the animal front. <laughs> you know? Is, yeah. I, mean, I watched all those guys lose their stomachs and stuff in that movie, and it was, like, fine. But then. <laughs> this you couldn't you know, do. Yeah. yeah. Thank God it was Linda Cardellini that I swear I was I got to a moment in the in the movie watching it and I was like, I swear to God, James, if you kill this raccoon, I know I'm never know. going to Thank yeah, God. I, I mean we got DC I got scared. Fails even worse under your watch. Yes. I hope, I hope you hope fail. Snyder yeah. comes in and re edits every movie you make if you kill this raccoon. I stood up and screamed that in the theater. Yeah. I love that. I love the use of Cosmo finally too. Gosh, that can be great. Can we get like a live action yeah. Super Pets Marvel version with like Rocket, Groot, and <laughs> Cosmo and yeah. all these animals together? Yeah. I need yeah. that. The good girl bit was really funny. And they, they came back to that just enough uh, to mm -hmm. make it to where it didn't get That old. poker scene was great with Howard the Duck and yeah. Craglin and all them. I love that he always works Howard the Duck in these. It's hilarious. Right. Yeah. Howard yeah. the Duck. <laughs> Maria... Balaklova, by the way, of Borat fame as as Cosmo. Shout out, yeah, to her. Yeah, good bit. Uh, Gamora back. Good to see her. It felt like they had been away a while. Like it felt yeah. like an older Guardians. I think that was a lot on, on purpose. Sure. But it felt like an older, like they'd been out doing their space outlaw thing for a few years, and they've seen a lot of crap. You know, I felt like I think mm -hmm. that really came through. That it's probably time to to end this in some capacity. Where do you want this to go from here, Brian? Do you wish some other director to come in and say, I have a take on Guardians. We need to keep it going. Should they not do what Guardians? Do maybe have a Star-Lord movie? If we see that teased maybe yeah, in this? That's what I'm thinking. They're, they at least have that as an option to yeah. not. Count me out on that. I think Star-Lord pops up in Secret Wars. Um, mm. That that seems to be the rumor. And that makes some sense. We've done Star Lord's uh, life story already. I mean, are these guys continuing yeah, the adventure of Star Lord? I, I mean, I, I I think if this this series this movie especially shows anything regarding Star Lord, it's that uh, he wasn't the main character, and th this is not a unique thought. James Gunn's been saying this for years, and then this movie, like the otter, full on says, like you're the star of the, <laughs> you know, the story's all about you, like. This was all about Rocket the whole time, and Star Lord was sort of playing an elevated B story in a way. And so, 
Um, I think that this movie proved that you can you could probably slide Star Lord into another story and still have him be Star Lord, doing Star Lord stuff. You know, being kind of did the he mix be Captain of, America? Yeah, I mean, you, you can you, you could mix the. The, the, cool his twist. whole thing of mixing comedy with action and 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 competence with incompetence and things like that, I think could slide in and fit with a lot of the other segments or little branches of this uh, of this universe. If if you want to do that, because um, otherwise, I I'm not saying no one else can do this series, but no, I'm not really sure that I want man. anybody else to do that. Yeah. You know, I I think that Gun has such a such an understand just really has his finger on the pulse of what makes this work. And I worry that doing this with the no- doing guardians four and five years or whatever with a different director, even directors that I like more just, you know, on, on the whole, yeah, I, I, no. I worry that it comes off as sort of a knockoff of guardians instead of feeling authentic like this does. Just wait for the DC thing to fail. Oh, yeah, wait for <laughs> yeah. everyone to hate Superman, and then he'll be like, guess what? I have the Guardians 4 script already done. Sup? No, I'm sure yeah. he'll do good over there. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the most interesting thing they've done in, in yeah. a long time. I mean, it's... But you do worry. Back to our first point, it's like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. he's someone that works really well, I think, within having some bosses. And I don't yeah. know now that he's the boss, maybe awesome. He's certainly talented. I mean, gosh, these scripts are pretty good, but yeah, uh, and the direction's great. But I don't mm-hmm. know. We've seen what he did before this. I remember when he got this. We were, I remember, that was part of it. I was like, Kent was like excited for this because Kent was hip to it long before me. Mm-hmm. Um, and was like, this is going to be good. And I was like, James Gunn? <laughs> right. <laughs> I and liked Beasley I liked his movies at that point. I liked Slither. I liked Super. See, yeah, no, that's f- and you no, and I'm not dissing you. I'm just saying I yeah. I was not hip to that. St- I mean, I saw it didn't it didn't resonate with me. Yeah, this was the first movie of his, both Slither and Super, um, where I was like, oh yeah, no, this is cool. But I I wasn't cool. I thought he was a hack. So, yeah. uh, but no, well, you, he broke you were, Jenna you, Fisher's you, heart. So that's all it takes become a hacker i'm pro here. that by the way i'm team karen brian hates me for this i'm team karen so that's fine oh yeah you are but you just uh, like to say a karen a filipelli so you feel more italian but. yeah exactly was your dad a gi but um <laughs> but you saw that part didn't bother me but the yeah i just didn't didn't but then yeah we, again like five minutes into the first one you go oh no this guy's good he knows what he's doing here mm. yeah yes it's it's gonna be different without the guardians in the MCU, but I think they'll find a place for certain characters. I th- I think uh, people want them still. And yeah, as James Gunn stays might be over, but I think their guardians days are uh, just starting fellas. His Superman movie is called Superman legacy, by the way it's written. Mm. I think it's going to be starting to shoot. I don't know who's casting yeah. that. He hasn't announced anything. Just Jeremy there. Renner. I've said I love James Gunn. It's like Born Legacy. A (laughs) Superman directed by James Gunn and not something I had on my bucket list of of movies, uh, wishes, but, you know, he might have a completely different vision than Guardians. What if it's John Hamm and it's old Super dark and the perfect. Now we're talking. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we've wanted for years is just retired, pissed off old (laughs) Superman. The Logan of Superman with with John Hamm. That's what we need. It's not that hard. Yeah. Yeah, yes. I really am Write interested yourself. in what he does with that because I, I think that I'm certainly. I think that's one of the biggest sins of of the DC extended universe is just how, yeah, bland and boring and and <laughs> sort of misunderstood Superman is and how bad totally. that creation was from Snyder and it's not going to be bland and boring at least you know with with guns. I'm I'm really curious to see me too I, what he's going to do with that. Curious and interested are the perfect words because. Yeah. I'm not certain it will be good. Sure, same. But same. I'm, I'm open and excited about it. You know, and yeah. interested in it because sure. it could be awesome. But I'm just, it's not. He's not one of those filmmakers that's like, oh yeah, he's doing this and it's gonna yeah. be awesome. But yeah. very well could be. Yeah, my thing with Gun at DC, and I'm, I've probably said this on the air before, is is not 
writer director gun. Like I have concerns about him as the Kevin Feige there because his for sure his sensibilities are so weird and different. That yeah. works great for a film or a film series. It right. may not work so great for an entire cinematic and, universe that you're you building. know DC, which I think knowing nothing by the way, just my experience before this comic book boom of things was like definitely had the cooler characters, but like leans kind of dark anyway. And I feel like that's where his sensibility goes. The cool thing about he and Marvel is Marvel has this kind of um, a little more clean cut comic, you know, origins. And so you throw the James Gunn energy on there and it's kind of the perfect mix. I worry about his mix on stuff. Cause we've seen, you know, the DC stuff, you know, you've got mm-hmm. and all of a sudden you're, you're in piss jar heaven <laughs> and you're going, what am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing here? I'm trying to sell toys. Yeah. No, I totally agree. One aspect of this, I would have liked to see in this third one. I loved John C. Riley and Glenn Close in the first one. Would yeah. have liked mm. to see the Nova Corps, Nova Corps, whatever, pop up again in this mm. series. We need a Nova movie. I'm going to keep saying it. We need a Nova <laughs> movie. We need it's been Glenn almost Close a decade since, since they teased that in Guardians. So we need Nova, yeah. Nova Corps, Nova Prime. All that needs to come back in some capacity. Yeah, we need Glenn Close in the MCU, like in a in a lead. Kind of sucks because I thought like Nathan Fillion would have made a great Nova, and they kind of used them in this in a different role. But mm-hmm. yeah, we'll see. Yeah, where they go. What do you think about Adam Warlock? Uh, a little underutilized. It was fine, yeah. Yeah. but I didn't yeah, feel like we got much out of that. Yeah, like much of personality or anything like that. And I'm not a huge Will Poulter guy in general, so yeah, I just like his look. Just a cool looking dude. Yeah, the, the yeah. character design was cool. I like the gold. Yeah, uh, yeah. it was fun. Gold. It's fun to have him as an idiot too, and not yeah. super overpowered and whatnot. I think that I thought the dynamic between Drax and Mantis was one of my favorite things in this movie too. Same. Mantis same. has become is the character that's grown He's, on me the most uh, throughout the series. She's awesome. Kind of one note in the first yeah. movie and a half, and it's really has grown. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. Well, I loved this. It, to me, this was far better than than Volume 2. I thought it was way more consistent tonally with, with Volume 1 and less just trying to do bits like Volume 2 was doing. Uh, so very high on this. I'm going to give this one an A. What about you, Brian? Yeah, we should mention, too, one of the better villains in, oh, yeah. in oh, this yes, whole great. run. Um, Chuck Woody, Shakespe- Shakespearean was, actor, Richard. Yeah, true was, uh, stage presence actor. He was you incredible. Have to go celebrity with these. Love yeah, this. totally. I think that's a great point for sure. Yeah, like I love Kurt Russell playing ego, but this this was awesome too. And I mean, he's a better villain. And I think with the guy with with the character like the High Evolutionary, who I don't know anything about coming in, uh, but there's a so, uh, who is the, oh, oh, okay. Uh, Dolores Umbridge in the fifth Harry Potter yeah. book in the movie. Oh, yeah. One of those, one of the things that, that I think is, I hate what that makes, actor forever. Yes, exactly. My favorite character what makes in that, series. that yeah. yeah. What makes, what makes that villain so great and diabolical and, and scary. Cardo- Cardolinian. I would say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, is that, it kills Kent every time. Uh, is that American she, the character, that character really believes what she's selling and she yeah. believes that she is right in what she's doing. And I think that's, that's the thing that comes through with this, with this character too, is um, he's doing horrific, terrible, yeah, awful, like, like universally reviled, awful things. And he believes that what he's doing is right and 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 good, and that makes it so much uh, scarier and and more real and whatnot. So I thought he was he was magnificent. So and the choice to call him raccoon, on one-off, ra- you know? the raccoon by his code name too is just just to yeah. demoralize yeah, him. Sure. Like not you're not yeah. even a name, you're a number. I think that's a good. Yeah, that was a great. That's great emotional choice. It's really too. well Classic done. Nineties so. yeah. movie villain move. 
For sure. Yeah. Loved it. So anyway, uh, I loved this movie. I mean, I'm, uh, it's very rare at this point that I go see a movie and I'm like immediately like, gosh, I wish I had time to go see that again before we do the episode. Um, it, it worked to me. It worked on every level. I think all of these characters got time to, um, got time to kind of shine a little bit without it feeling like a bloated, mass of of characters and and all right now it's your turn now it's this we got to get all these things in um for being two and a half hours long it felt like this is one of those that kind of earned i think the the two and a half hours and appreciated that needle drops were great writing's great it's a funny movie all these things all these things worked really well um and i was yeah it was it was very emotional watching mo- the majority it was especially the second second half of the movie and uh you know, very affecting in that way. So it's an A plus for me. I I definitely top five and I, I don't know, man, this might want to give it some time, maybe watch it again, but this first impression is this, this might be my number one Marvel movie. So I want to give it some wow. time. Wow. Yeah. Loved it. Really loved this. Wow. 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 That's a, you buried the lead there. I didn't realize go, that. Baby. I mean, I knew I dug it. I dug it too, but man, that's awesome. Yeah. What a cool, that's a good take. Um, okay, I'm going to go. I would probably give this a solid A. Um, two and a half hours, though. So A minus. <laughs> Got to knock it down at least. Yeah, I was, you know, I well, the thing was that I dug it. I really dug it. Yeah. Couple watch checks. Like, hey, I'm still in this room, you know? <laughs> and so that, you know, I, I note those when I do it. Because sometimes you'll have something that's two and a half and I don't check the watch once. I did do probably two watch checks in the last 25 minutes. And so I'm going to knock it down a half a letter grade, but it's a certainly in this recent phase of Marvel boy, definitely the best, but it's, it's up there with the best. I think Um, with it's up there with the regonk. Mm -hmm. It's up there with, with Iron Man. It's up there with, uh, you know, some of the Avengers stuff. So yeah, yeah. I, 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 you're right, Brian. I didn't want to see it. I'm not a psychopath. I didn't want to see it right away again like you did because, you know, mm-hmm. like I'm not a weird nerd, but um, I would like to see this again. I can't wait for it to be on sure. VOD or Disney Plus or whatever. Yeah, rewatchability on this one's going to be going to be Big high. Too, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I know you like the Beastie Boys, Brian. Oh, yeah. That that also added to the, the A plus there. You he the said that they uh, on Letterman that's gone super viral lately. It's yeah, on YouTube. and my, me and my wife watched so that. So good to see that. We've watched that like once a week for like the past three years. I swear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> check it out one. Oh, so good. The check best late one. night performance so ever. Yeah, so good. Here with that's their good. album, Ill Communication. They're dope, <laughs> fat, and cool. <laughs> I love Dave. He's the best. So good. The only yeah, bummer on that said... is they have a different keys player because it would have been so sick to have Paul. Yeah. <laughs> Punk I'm band, he, punk band, BC boys are the best, <laughs> for yeah. sure. Because Love later it. in the Dave game, Paul would just sit in with everybody, and that was a little early before, and that would have been sick if Paul sure. just. Mm-hmm. Have you dun, heard the dun, dun, dun. punk record they did, Brian? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on yeah. Spotify now. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, nice. Aglio e Olio is what it's called. It's just yeah, fast punk. Yeah, that's <laughs> good. Rules. Yeah. Yeah. Around the same time, around the same time as Ill such a fun evolution of a band. Man. I think it's uh, year after, so cool. yeah, year after Ill Communication. They just did a punk record. Yeah. It's like let's, yeah, this is fun. It's it's really impressive. Great yeah. band. Gunn said he had no. I saw an interview with him. The guy asked him about trying to get all these songs for these three movies and how how difficult it was and you know everything. And he said. uh he said that that the what's it what's the band that uh, the Mr. Blue Sky that that one was the one that was the hardest one to get yellow the guy was just like yeah he was just like no I'm not doing it it took forever for him to get that but all of these Jeff other Lynn, bands bro. yeah Jeff there you Lynn's go all, be bought. <laughs> yeah all these other bands that he's gone to since the first one like Beastie Boys he says like they'll give you the song for the movie, but they will never give the song for the soundtrack. And they were like, Oh yeah, we love guardians. Yeah. I'm no surprised problem. Radiohead was so down. Honestly, Radiohead, same thing. And there was another one that he mentioned specifically of like, is notorious for not, not granting, uh, for, for movies. And they were like, Oh, we love guardians. Yeah, for sure. No problem. So that's funny. That's, the, um, that's good I mean, I know it's not a budget thing because 
they got uh, Led Zeppelin for Thor, and yeah, Led Zeppelin's yeah, yeah. like literally said Notorious. no to every yeah. single right. thing they've yeah. ever been they offered. Must so have money whipped them. They so just money whipped that. the crap out of them. It's like, hey, yeah. Yeah. this Thor sure. trailer needs needs the immigrant song. <laughs> it's too perfect. Yeah, you so get, like, you you're, like, you're right. Mountain Fifty mil seeds for six weeks. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah uh all right uh grade richard did you grade it a minus because of the two and a half but yeah but uh loved it can't wait to see it again all right in, in there it is months. guardians volume three hopefully we'll see more from the guardians down the road do you want to make a podcast spotify's got a platform that lets you make one super easily then distribute it everywhere and even earn money on one place for free it's called Spotify for Podcasters, and here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer, so no matter what your setup's like, you can start creating today. Then, you can distribute your podcast to Spotify and everywhere else podcasts are heard. And video podcasts are also available on Spotify. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. Best of all, it's totally free with no catch. Ever since we started using Spotify for podcasters on Mad About Movies, it's made it super easy to get our show posted and out to all the man fam. We highly recommend you give it a try. Download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. All right, let's hit a weekly recommend, fellas. Weekly recommend. What you got for us, Richard? Yeah, mine's a, uh, a show... Brian, you're going to love this. Up your alley. We were talking about it briefly earlier, but I don't know if you know this little nitpick or this little tidbit, not nitpick. So um, the show, new show on Food Network called Chow House. Chow spelled C-I-A-O. Uh-huh. It's a Tus- they There's this Tuscan villa in Tuscany. Turns out that's where most of the Tuscan villas are. You can't get, and, a, uh, you can't get a villa in Tuscany. Yeah. You can't get you one. Can't. Don't even you look. You can't get one. Don't even look. And so the uh, it's a standard cooking show. It's Alex Guarnicelli though, and this really handsome guy from Santa Monica. And uh, but here's the thing: it's good, and the cooking's great, and it's all Italian stuff, and and with their own twist on it. Not every chef is an Italian style cook, so that's cool. You get like Italian style jambalaya and all this stuff from the New Orleans chef. But Brian, dear Brian, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they pick the villa on House Hunters International. Oh, okay. it's a crossover. Now so, I'm in, baby. Yeah. So the now the I'm lead sold. judge, the other guy that's not Alex Cornicelli, he goes over to Italy on House Hunters International <laughs> and picks. He goes. He gets to look at three villas and he picks one. So it's it's that's your, an incredible crossover <laughs> idea. So that's I'm kind of jealous. That's awesome. That's so awesome. it couldn't be more up your alley on both fronts. But it's actually an awesome <laughs> cooking show. Too. I mean, you know, it's the. It's the Project Runway, the Top Chef, the formula, you know, the great yeah, reality show yeah. formula. The cooking's great. But yeah, you get to actually watch him be like, ah, oh, this one's great, but the kitchen's in the basement. We can't have that. All that good stuff. <laughs> so couldn't wait to share that with you. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. I'm going to check that out for sure. What is it on? Sorry. I forgot. Food I Network is that. the Chow House. Okay. House Hunters International and HGTV is him picking right. Bill. I advise both. Right. But we'll just go awesome. with Chow House for now. Love it. That's great. What you got, Brian? Uh, recommend a book. Uh, side recommend for Top Chef in season whatever it's in. It's been an awesome, oh, awesome season. So we're getting close to the, getting pretty close to the finale here. It's yeah. in London. I'm so great, far behind because settings, I've been man. fasting at night. I've been eating like the one meal a day things. I got super oh, fat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I can't watch Top Chef and not have food. Yeah. So like, I got I'm, you. I keep yeah. not <laughs> watch. Yeah, I'm only it. seeing like two episodes because I'm yeah. whatever. It's been a really good season. Uh, yeah, like London's a great setting. They've they've had some really cool challenges. Padma looks incredible. So there's that. Too. Um, but so I'm gonna recommend a, a a book. Yeah, Tom also looks incredible. <laughs> yeah, uh, love love Tom. Uh, it's called Par- Easy by Susanna Clark. It, it was the it was two years ago. It was like a ma- big big fantasy sci fi award yeah. winner book. Um. It's a pretty short read. It's like less than seven hours on Audible. Good, good audio book too. It's it's uh, I think it's Chiwetel Ejiofor is the reader. Okay, um, which is cool. Like he's all right. To the, he's yeah, an actor. He's, he's a pretty decent actor. Um, it is. It's kind of hard to describe without without giving away the bit. But it 
it's 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 fantasy, but it's like kind of light fantasy. It's not like a there's no dwarves singing or Thank anything God. like that. It's, yeah, it's, it's, I don't have to learn a new religion to understand yeah. why if one character doesn't like another. <laughs> yeah, it's one character, like Paranesi, the lead character, and he is sort of he he lives in what he describes as a house but as as it goes you realize it's a it's not just a house like it's a it's a much bigger area or landscape or whatever he lives in this house by himself except for one companion and uh who he meets with for business meetings twice a week and uh it's it's funny but not i mean it's not like super laugh laugh funny but it it's it's got some almost like uh hitchhiker's guide sensibilities to like the humor of it, I guess just lightly, lightly on that front. Anyway, it, it, it's impossible to, to really describe without giving it away, but it's a short read and it's really well done. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I liked so much that I, I then went and got her, her last book that everybody was into um, Jonathan strange and Mr. Norrell. And I found that yeah. one to be kind of tedious and um, a little, a little too long, but nice seven hour, quick, quick read, good reader. Uh, definitely worth checking out. Paranesi by Susanna Clark is the book. There you go. The B Go book recommend. Mm. All right. I'm, I'm going to recommend a movie. Uh, Hitchcock. Uh, this one's called nice. Suspicion. And it's oh. worth checking out. It's got Cary Grant, Joan Fontaine. And uh, she won best, best Actress for this one back in 1941. And it's about a couple who meet and fall in love and the guy played by Cary Grant might not be what he seems. So just a little nice little uh, thriller for you. Perfect 90 minute Hitchcock movie for you to check out. If you haven't seen it almost a hundred years old at this point. So it's about time you get around to it. Suspicion. Check it out. Great movie. All right. Nice. That's the, the main feed pod. We're going to dive into some X-Men talk here momentarily though for the vip so check that out and uh we'll be back next week talking book club the next chapter <laughs> just kidding i don't know what we'll be talking maybe bo's afraid 80 for brady might get around to that double feature 80 for brady book club too. yeah there we go stay tuned for that next week who knows what will be in store guarantee those See will be too time. long as you might die during it See ya. Hey baby, I hear the blues are calling Tossed salads and scrambled eggs And maybe I seem a bit confused Yeah, maybe, but I got you pegged <laughs> But I don't know what to do With those tossed salads and scrambled eggs They're calling again Scrambled eggs all over my face They're making me ya ya the silence is They're calling again.